This is a story about a world obsessed with stuff. It's a story about a system in crisis. We're trashing the planet, we're trashing each other, and we're not even having fun. The good thing is that when we start to understand the system, we start to see lots of places to step in and turn these problems into solutions. Can I tell you, I love my Pantene Pro-V. Of the dozen or so personal care products that I use every day, it's the one I can't live without. It says it gives my dull hair the ultimate cool shine. How does it do that? I was wondering that while I was lathering it in my hair one day, so I read the ingredients right here. Sodium lauryl sulfate, tetrasodium EDTA, methyl isothiazolinone. What is this stuff? I took this list to some scientists who know how to read it. Turns out my Pantene contains a chemical linked to cancer. And lots of other products in my bathroom, from sunscreen to lipstick and even baby shampoo, also contain chemicals linked to cancer or other problems like learning disabilities, asthma, and even damaged sperm. Like most parents, I try to keep my family safe. But now I find out my bathroom is a minefield of toxins? What are we supposed to do? To find out the answers, we have to go back to one of the key features of our materials economy. Toxics in, toxics out. If, at the factory, you pour toxic chemicals into a product, like baby shampoo, you're going to wind up with toxic baby shampoo. And toxics in workers, communities, and, duh, babies. So let's take a closer look at this toxic outrage where it seeps into our lives every day, in the bathroom. The average woman in the U.S. uses about 12 personal care products daily. The average man, about six. Each product containing a dozen or more chemicals. Less than 20% of chemicals and cosmetics have been assessed for safety by the industry's safety panel. So we just don't know what they do to us when we use them. Would you fly in an airline that only inspects 20% of its planes? Of course, not all of these chemicals are dangerous, but we know that many are. Some are carcinogens. That means that they can cause cancer. Others are neurotoxins and reproductive toxins, proven to mess up brain development and reproduction in animals. Wait a minute, we're animals too. It's like a giant experiment. We're using all these mystery chemicals and just waiting to see what happens. One thing we do know is that they're getting inside us. I had my body's toxicity levels tested, and I'm loaded with things like mercury, flame retardants, triclosan, and lead. We all are. Even babies are being born pre-polluted. Now, I know we can't live in a lead-free world, but do we have to put lead in our lipstick? I don't know. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I just bought the wrong thing. At the store, the choices seem endless. I can get lipstick in 49 shades, or shampoo for hair that's too dry, oily, fine, limp, or frizzy. But what about the choices that really matter? Like the choice to buy products that are safe? It turns out the important decisions don't happen when I choose to take a product off the shelf. They happen when companies and governments decide what products should go on the shelves. So who are these companies? This is Procter & Gamble. They're the ones offering me Herbal Essences, the number two shampoo in the country. It contains toxic petrochemicals made from oil. Since when is oil an herb? On cosmetics labels, words like herbal, natural, even organic have no legal definition. That means that anybody can put anything in a bottle and call it natural, and they do. I mean, can you imagine a top seller called Petro Essences? Gross. What's even nastier are hair relaxers marketed to five-year-olds and skin whitening creams. These are super toxic, both in their ingredients and in the message they send about what beauty is. Ooh, here's Estee Lauder offering me a chance to help find a cure for breast cancer. That's nice. But wait, they're also using chemicals linked to cancer. Don't you think the best way for Estee Lauder to fight cancer is to stop using those chemicals in the first place? So really, I get to choose between meaningless claims on a bottle. But these guys get the real choice about what goes into those bottles. And that happens back here, at the factories where they're formulated. Why do the makers of these products use all these toxics? Are they trying to poison us? No, they're just working from a 1950s mindset when people were totally swept up in better living through chemistry. In all that excitement, they forgot to worry about human health impacts. That was years ago, and they are still using these same old toxic chemicals. Today, big cosmetics companies say the doses of poison in their products are small enough to be harmless. 
Yeah, maybe if you use them once a year. I guess they never get out and see that their products are being used and combined with other products every day. A little toxic dose under your arms, a little more on your hair, on your lips. And workers in nail and hair salons get dosed all day long. So the industry is used to doing things this way. And they can. Because even now that scientists have linked the chemicals they're using to all sorts of problems, there are no laws to get rid of them. You're thinking, really? Come on, nobody's making sure that the stuff we smear all over our bodies is safe? Nope. The FDA doesn't even assess the safety of personal care products or their ingredients. Since 1938, they've banned just eight out of over 12,000 ingredients used in cosmetics. They don't even require that all of the ingredients be listed on the label. Now, this is an example where we can all agree a little more government action would be helpful. This lack of regulation leaves a huge hole that the cosmetics industry is all too happy to fill. They set up their own committee to self-police their products, and compliance with their recommendations is voluntary. So the cosmetics industry is making the rules and then deciding whether or not to follow them. So you see, it isn't our fault that these toxic products are in our bathrooms. It's a whole broken system that's ignoring the simple rule, toxics in, toxics out. But we're not helpless. There are resources online that we can use to protect ourselves by identifying the best possible choices in the store. But the real action is with people working to change the system. Because if we really want to solve this problem, we got to start here with these guys. Women, parents, workers, people all over the country are demanding that Congress pass a new law, giving FDA the power to make sure that our personal care products are safe. We need common sense laws based on the precautionary principle. That means that when you're dealing with hazardous chemicals, just err on the side of caution. Let's not debate how much lead should be allowed in lipstick. Just get the toxic chemicals out of our products. Smarter laws would force companies to get past that old 50s mindset and figure out how to get us all clean and shiny without toxic chemicals. Can they? Totally. Many responsible cosmetics companies are already putting safer products on the market. Green chemists are developing substances that are designed to be safe and non-toxic in the first place. European governments have required the removal of many toxic chemicals and companies have figured out how to comply. When cosmetics are reformulated to be safe and labeled honestly, then we can feel comfortable with the choices available at the store. We can choose bouncy hair or full hair, shiny lipstick or matte. We can even choose to feel beautiful without using 20 products. But we'll know that whatever we choose, the most important choice, the choice to be safe and healthy, has already been made. Make some label comparisons. Then you'll really be shocked. Here's a short list of the top 12 toxic ingredients you'll find in your home. In fact, we call these the Toxic 12. We'll talk about five of them in some detail. Once again, check these ingredients against the products you use. First, propylene glycol, butylene glycol, or ethylene glycol. Now run into your garage and check your antifreeze. Antifreeze is one of those glycols. Now, check your facial cleansers, shampoos, conditioners, toothpaste, underarm deodorants, and baby products. These glycols act as surfactants, wetting agents, and solvents. They penetrate the skin fast, weaken protein and cellular structure. They're strong enough to remove barnacles from boats. The EPA warns us not to pour them into our soil, yet we smear them on our bodies. Contact with these glycols may cause brain, liver, and kidney malfunction. Yet, about one-third of all the beauty and personal care products you use morning, afternoon, and evening contain them and do not have a warning label. Why are these glycols used in such abundance? One answer, they come cheap. The non-toxic ingredients needed to replace them are far more expensive. Now propylene glycol is being added to many of our cookies and ice cream. It keeps them softer. You put petroleum in a cookie, and a hundred years from now, it'll be soft and tender. Second, sodium hydroxide. This time, check under your sink. Check out your Drano or other sink and oven cleaners. Especially check the crystal or dry Drano. Crystal Drano is 100% sodium hydroxide. This is a poison. Read the warning label. Look at the skull and crossbones. Yeah, it's caustic soda lye. 
it, you'll find sodium hydroxide in most common toothpastes, especially the ones claiming total or extra whitening. I guess they figure if it cleans your drains, <laughs> it'll do a good job on your teeth. It's also in many of your soaps and facial cleansers. Third, sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, or ammonium lauryl sulfate. These sulfates are strong detergents. They're used in garage floor cleaners and engine degreasers. Yet they'll be in 90%, get that, 90% of your beauty and personal care products that foam. Why? It's the cheapest way to create foam. They're linked to eye damage, depression, diarrhea, skin irritation, and even death. Our bodies retain these sulfates for extensive periods of time. This means that even smaller dosages amount up to higher and higher levels of toxicity in our bodies. Think of what that means to smaller bodies, like infants and children. Think of the unborn infants. Any wonder why attention deficit and learning disabilities are at epidemic proportions? Fourth, DEA, MEA, or TEA. These are hormone disrupting chemicals with ties to cancer. They're restricted in Europe, yet used freely in the US. The EPA says that repeated applications result in major increases in liver, breast, and kidney cancer. The risk is significantly increased in children. Fifth, PEG, or polyethylene glycol. This is a carcinogenic petroleum compound that reduces the skin's natural moisture. Prolonged use seriously ages the skin. In addition, it has links to all forms of cancer. The higher the PEG content, like PEG 20, 50, 100, or 120, the worse it becomes. Sixth, DMDM or urea. These are preservatives that release formaldehyde. Seventh, mineral oil. It's another petroleum product that coats the skin like saran wrap. Baby oil is 100% mineral oil. Eighth, triclosan. It's a synthetic antibacterial with a chemical structure similar to Agent Orange. The EPA registers it as a pesticide. Ninth, parabens or anything that has paraben as part of its name. They are hormone disrupting chemicals. Tenth, isopropyl alcohol. It ages and dries the skin, promoting wrinkles and brown spots. Eleventh, FD and C color pigments. These are synthetic colors from coal tar. They score the highest mark on the toxic scale. Twelfth, fragrances. They may contain up to 4,000 ingredients. Animal urine is most often used to create the desired smell. Well, those are the toxic 12. There's another 100 or so that should receive dishonorable mention. Additional toxicity information can be found at safecosmetics.org. Check it out. By the way, guess which occupational group has the youngest death rate? You probably guessed it. Cosmetologists. That's obviously due to increased exposure to these chemicals. Just an FYI, lawyers have the next youngest death rate. You can figure that one out for yourself. You might be asking why this is allowed to take place. Easy answer. In 1938, the cosmetic industry was granted self-regulation. Nothing has changed. Since that time, we have 25,000 chemicals marketed without government intervention, regardless of what the tests show. This is probably a good place to warn you about companies who claim their products are safe. They'll tell you not to panic, that they use food grade or cosmetic grade glycols, sulfates, solvents, or parabens. They'll tell you how mild they are and that the critics are going overboard. It's the same thing some said years ago about smoking. Smoking can't hurt you. Smoking's not a threat to health. Well, that certainly wasn't true. A few years from now, additional information will show that these same toxic products cause a threat, just like cigarettes and smoking. Women use nearly 200 toxic ingredients daily in their routine, and men use nearly 100. These toxins, even in mild forms, mount up, stay in our bodies, store in our cells, and break down our immune system. One more thing. Don't get caught up in the word natural. It means almost nothing. Most of these toxins are natural. For heaven's sake, cocaine's natural. Most people still don't know where to buy non-toxic products. It's not like you can go to drug stores or grocery stores or department stores and find replacements. Even the most expensive are often the most toxic. They might come in prettier bottles, but they're just as bad. Companies and products like Hertz, 
Coke, Xerox, Q-Tip, and Kleenex have become the household names for their entire industry.